Hi guys, welcome to Tactic Devs. In today's video, we'll be looking at how to implement a details pop-up window. Now the primary function of the pop-up window is to reveal information. So let's say you have some data that you want to display inside a data grid, but that data has a large number of fields. Let's say it has name, email, etc. But you don't want to show all the fields in a single row. So you decide to only show the relevant fields. Then what you want to do is you want to allow the user to double click a single row to reveal the rest of the information inside a pop-up window. So that's what I'm going to be showing you today. So without further delay, let's get to the coding. Right here, I already have a project set up, a WPF project. And I have the main window.xaml file already opened. So here in the grid, I'm going to add in a data grid control. And I'll give it a name. I'll just say my grid. Now for us to view data inside the data grid, we need to assign the data grid's item source to a collection of data. So we'll be doing that in the code behind. So I'll just open up the code behind. And here I'll type in my grid, then item source. Okay, so apparently I don't have any data. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to create some seed data, then I'll assign the item source to that data. So I'm going to make use of it too. It's actually a website called generatedata.com. This tool can help me generate some random data and I'll be able to use that data to demonstrate. So I'll just open up my browser and I'll just type in generatedata.com. All right, so the website has loaded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the data format that I want. And in this case, I'll choose C sharp. And then I'll select the fields that I want to be included in the data. So I'll select name, phone, email, address, and country. Then I'll just go ahead and click the generate button here. All right, so here we see the data has been generated. So right now there are only five entries, but in case you want more, you can just click on generate and then specify the number of rows that you want. So basically that's the number of entries of data. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and copy this and I'll go back to Visual Studio. So here in the main window method, I'll just paste the data. Then I'll just format it well. Okay, so here we have the data. So it's a variable and the name is data and it's an array and we have the data inside. So apparently this is an anonymous type. It doesn't have a specific type. That's why you just see the new keyword there, but it has some properties, name, phone, email, address, and country. So I'll go ahead and just collapse this. And if I hover on this box here, we can see the data inside. Now I'll assign the grids item source property to that data. So I'll go ahead and test the application. Okay, so the app is up and running. Now you can see here, the data grid automatically created the columns and you can see the names are corresponding to the properties in the objects. So we have name, phone, email, etc. So what I want to implement here is where if I double click on a single row, a pop-up window should open with some information related to this um, individual here inside. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'll just close this and I'll go back to the main window here. 
So for me to achieve this, I need to create an event handler that's going to respond to the mouse double click. And that event must be attached to every row that's going to exist within this data grid. So one way I could do I can do that is I can use routed events. So I'm going to see if the data grid row class has got a routed event uh, that deals with double clicking. So I'll just type in data grid row. So unfortunately, there are only two events. We have the selected event and the unselected event. So I won't be using this approach. Now what I can do here is I can actually declare a style and that style will set an event listener on the data grid row. So I'm going to declare resources for this data grid. So just a data grid resources. Then within this resources section, I'll define a style and the style is going to target a type and that type will be the data grid row type. So basically what's happening here, this style will be applied to every data grid row that's going to exist within this data grid control. So using this style, I'm going to set an event setup. So event setter, and I'll specify the type of event I want to set on each data grid row. So I'll set the event property to mouse double click event. Then I'm also going to define a handler that's going to handle the logic whenever this event is fired. So I'll just go ahead and click on new event handler. And we see an event handler has been added here. Okay, so I'll go now to the code behind and I should be able to see that event handler. All right, so here we can see the event handler has been added. Okay, now what I'm going to do here is now I'm going to create a window and this window will be the details window. So it's going to hold uh, some controls that are going to reveal information um, that's going to be so that's going to be stored in a single row. Okay, so I'll go to my project here, right click, then I'll go to add window. I'll just give it a name, details window. Okay, so here we have a window, it's called the details window. I'll just resize the width to 400. Okay, so something like that. Then within this window, I'm going to create some labels. So I'll just add in a text block element. I'll set the text to one of the field names. Okay, then I'll resize it. And I can do that by just setting the horizontal and vertical alignment to center. So it will resize it to the content. I'll set the font weight to bold. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just copy and paste this element and I'll move it downwards and I'll copy both of them and paste them Okay, so now here we have five labels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename them. 
So for the second one, I'll just give it, I'll just name it email. Phone. Address and country. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to create the text blocks that are going to hold the actual information. So I'll just select all of them, then copy, paste, then I'll shift them to the right side. Okay, so here in the XAML code, I'll just separate them. So these represent the labels that are on the left side, and these represent the actual data that's going to be revealed here. So what I'm going to do is I'll select this. Then I'll change the fonts Wait, I'll just change that back to normal. So I'll get rid of this bold, change it back to normal. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create bindings for this for this text property on each text block. So I'll go here and I'll say binding. Then I'll bind it to the name property. I'll do the same for email and the rest. Okay, so here I created bindings for the text properties and these binding names here are actually uh, corresponding to the fields of this data. So we have name, phone, email, country, etc. Now the question is this details window here, the question is where is this information going to come from? Now if I create a direct binding just like this simple binding, the first thing this window is going to do is it's going to look for the data context. So this window has a property called data context. So it's going to look for this data context. If an object has been assigned to this property, it's now going to use that object to actually bind to these um, properties here. It will look for these properties in that object. So. I'll go to the code behind for this details window. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to redefine this constructor. So whenever this class is being instanced, it's going to request for an object. So I'll just type in object and I'll just give it a name, parameter name, user. So it's going to get this user object and then it's going to assign the data context property to that user object. So basically, after assigning this user to the data context object, then this window can actually bind these properties from that user object. Okay, so I think this should be good. Okay, so I'll go back to the main window, which is this window here, and I'll go to the code behind. Okay, so inside this event handler that was created, I'm going to add in some logic. Now here, this event handler will pass an object, which is the mouse button event acts object, and this object contains some information, quite useful information. So what I'll do is I'll first create an if statement. Then this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check for the button that was pressed. So I'll go E and then changed button, All right? So basically this returns the button that was clicked, whether it's the left or the right button on the mouse. So in this case, I'm now going to say mouse, button left so if the button that was clicked is the left button then execute some code if it's the right one don't do anything now this object that is retained in this method 
actually contains the origin of this event. So we know that this event is attached to the data grid row. So whenever a data grid row is clicked, this event, this event handler will be executed. So I can actually access the data grid row that was clicked through this same object here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable. I'll say row. And I'll say this row is equals to E and the source. So this source property actually returns the object that raised the event. Now in this case, we know that this object is actually a data grid row. So we need to cast this object to a data grid row type. So I'm going to type in as don't mind that code that's just the intelli code trying to help me so I'll just type in data grid row okay so this object that's returned we're going to treat it as a data grid row Now, once that object is returned, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new details window. So I'll be like, I'll go details window. Then I'll just give it a name detail window and say new. Now we know at this point, this detail, this details window requires a parameter. And since we know that this is a data grid row that was returned, we can actually access the item that it was representing. So I'll take this variable row and then I'll say row item. So the data grid row object stores that information about the object inside the item property here. So everything about a single entry of data will be stored inside this item property okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to get this details window then i'll change some properties on that details window and the property that i'm going to change is the owner property so basically this property defines the owner of this window so I'll set the owner to this very class. Now we know that this class is actually a window class here. So what this means is this details window will be actually a child of this main window class, which means whenever I close this main window, this window will close as well because it belongs to this window. Okay, so I'll set the owner. Then I'm going to say details window show. Okay, so what's happening here is I first detect the button that was pressed. If it's a left click, then I use this parameter that was passed to access the grid, the grid row that was actually selected. So I store it inside this variable called row. Then I create a new details window and I pass that details window an object. And the object is from this very row. So through the item property here. Then I set the owner of this details window to this class, which is a window as well. Then I show the window. Now, if we go back to the details window here, that object will be stored inside this data context property and the window here is going to access that information through these bindings here okay so let's go ahead and test this code and see how the application behaves all right so the app is up and running so i can right click on any row nothing happens but if i double left click we see a pop-up window shows here and you see the first user, you have the name, email, phone, etc. Okay, all the information is there. I can click on another window and it pops up again. 
So there we have it. You can you can also set the default position for the pop-up window. Maybe let's say if I click here, it doesn't start at this corner, maybe probably at the center. That's also possible. And then I can close these individually because these are different instances. Okay. So guys, um, that's it for today's tutorial. And remember to like and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more content. And I'll see you in the next one.